Welcome to this comprehensive video on revenue recognition. First, we'll go through the five steps of revenue recognition, and then we'll go through three full examples. We'll cover the important theory and the journal entries for each example. And then we'll end the video by talking about construction, accounting, revenue recognition. So with that, let's jump in. So the first step of the revenue recognition process is to identify the contract with the customer. This simply means that if you don't have an agreement with the customer, then you can't recognize any revenue. This is a pretty straightforward part of the revenue recognition process. The next part is to identify the separate performance obligations. Performance obligations are the individual outputs that you are required to provide to the customer. Sometimes you're only providing one performance obligation. So if you're simply selling one item, such as a cell phone to a customer, this is one performance obligation. But if let's say you are constructing three different towers of apartment buildings, those would be three different performance obligations. So that's why we have to identify the separate performance obligations. And then for step three, we are going to identify the transaction price, which is simply how much the customer is going to pay. So then if you have different performance obligations, you have to allocate that transaction price among the different performance obligations. And then after that, you have to identify when you're going to recognize the revenue. It's either going to be at a point in time, meaning that you recognize it 100% right away, or over time, such as with construction accounting. So these are the five steps of revenue recognition. Now, the best way to understand these steps is to apply them to examples. So let's consider the first example, which is quite straightforward. Imagine that we are a laptop manufacturer and we sell one laptop to a customer for $1,000. We sell one laptop, which is the performance obligation. And as soon as we sell it to the customer, we can recognize all of the revenue. So this is recognizing revenue at a point in time. This is because we are transferring the full control right when we sell it to the customer. It's not like we're providing a service over time. We are selling the laptop right away. This applies to any item that you're selling right away, any kind of retail that you are selling. So this means that as soon as we receive the 1,000 debit to cash, we can credit revenue for 1,000. So we don't need to credit unearned revenue. We recognize 100% of the revenue at a point in time right away as soon as we sell the laptop. Now let's imagine a second example. So imagine that the company is Maxwell CPA Review, a CPA exam prep company. So I provide monthly access to a course. So imagine that a student pays 1200 for 12 months of access to the course. This means that my performance obligation is giving access to the course, but I can't recognize 1200 at a point in time. I need to recognize the revenue over time because I'm providing the service over time. I'm transferring the control over time. So this means that when I debit the cash for 1200 at the beginning, I can't recognize any of that revenue. So I need to credit unearned revenue for 1200. And then each month, as I provide one month of access to the course, I can then debit 100 out of unearned revenue and credit revenue for 100. So I'm recognizing 100 of revenue over time for 12 months. Now let's jump into a third, more complicated example that has two separate performance obligations. How's it going, everyone? My name is Christopher Souza, and I recently just passed four parts of the CPA exam. Maxwell's CPA review course absolutely changed my life. I was tired of failing. I mentally just could not do it anymore, and I knew that I was smart enough to pass this exam. So I thousand percent recommend Maxwell CPA review course. If it was not for him, I would have never passed the exam. Thank you, Kyle. Now let's consider a more complex example of revenue recognition. This is going to involve two different performance obligations where we need to allocate the price. So let's say the customer signs an agreement to purchase a home security system for 1500. So this is the transaction price. This includes a security system installation and a one year monitoring service. So we can see that we have two different performance obligations. One is an installation which occurs at a point in time 
so we can recognize the revenue right away for this. But the monitoring service is a 12 month contract. So we'd recognize this revenue over 12 months. Now we need to see how much of the 1500 to allocate to each of these performance obligations. So let's look at their standalone prices. The security system is 1000 and monitoring service is 600. So we look at their percentages. So the security system, 1000 over 1600, 62.5%. So we multiply that by 1500 and it's allocated this amount for the security system. So then 600 over 1600, the monitoring service gets 37.5% or 562, 50. What this means is that we get to recognize 937.50 right away, but we have to recognize the 562.50 over 12 months. So now let's think about the journal entries. We received the full 1500 at the beginning, but we have only earned the revenue from the security system at the beginning. So we can only recognize the 937.50 as revenue. The money from the monitoring service is unearned revenue. So this is a liability that we have, and we're going to recognize this revenue over 12 months. So after the first month, we provided one month of this monitoring service. Therefore, we take 1 12th of the 562, and we debit it out of unearned revenue, and we recognize the revenue. So then just to summarize what we did here, we took the 1500 transaction price and we needed to allocate it between the two performance obligations. So then we see their percentage of their standalone price to then multiply by the 1500 and find their allocation price. This then tells us how much we can recognize in revenue at a point in time and how much we have to recognize over time. I just wanna highlight the importance of the unearned revenue account. Any time that we receive cash, but we can't record revenue yet, it's going to be credited to unearned revenue, which is a liability account. So make sure that you memorize unearned revenue, a liability account when we receive cash, but we're not allowed to recognize the revenue yet. Now let's transition into recognizing revenue for construction accounting. We determine the amount of revenue we can recognize by the percentage complete of the project. And we find the percentage complete by dividing the costs that we have incurred over the total cost for the project. So let's jump into an example. Now let's consider this example for how we recognize revenue on a multi-year construction project. This is known as the percentage completion method. So let's say we are constructing a theme park, but it will take three years to complete. We are going to earn total revenue of 12 million and spend 5 million in costs. So we're going to base the percentage completion on how much we have spent on the project. So let's say that one year goes by and we have spent 1 million out of 5 million on the project. So we divide the 1 million of costs incurred over the 5 million of total costs. Therefore, we are 20% complete with the project. This means that we can recognize 20% of the total revenue. Total revenue is 12 million, so we can recognize 2.4 million of revenue. This means that our gross profit for the first year is the 2.4 million of revenue. We spent 1 million, so our cost of goods sold is 1 million. Therefore, the gross profit is 1.4 million. So I hope that you feel more confident with revenue recognition after having watched this video. If you have any questions, you can write them in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching.